Hello class, today we're going to be looking at um, chapter 16, section 2, Disruption of Genetic Equilibrium. And so those five things from Hardy Weinberg that we mentioned, we're going to go through what those are a little more specifically and explain how they happen normally. So a normal um, environment, normal population does not follow the ideal situation that Hardy and Weinberg came up with. Instead, we see evolution because of at least one of these five things happening in a population. So number one is mutation. And you can refer back to mutation notes in the past if you choose. Um, and a couple things that you could write there if you would like to add something in uh, is just any change in DNA sequence. or chromosomes. Number two is gene flow, and this is the process where genes move from one population to the next. When that happens is in immigration or emigration. So immigration is moving into the population, and emigration is moving out of. the population. Genetic drift is allele frequencies that are in a population change because the population is small. So again, allele frequencies we had looked at in the last section, you would be calculating how many big B's there are versus how many total big B and little b letters there are. So you're looking at that gene pool and seeing it drift from one kind of extreme to another. Number four is non-random mating. And in this one, mate selection is influenced by location um, or similar traits or sexual selection. So if they give a really good display, they might win a mate versus um, not having bright colors or not having a good mating ritual. And number five is natural selection. Natural selection just says that some members are more likely to survive and then make it to reproductive age. Now there's three that we're going to look at, three little graphs that we're going to look at. And um, this will go on your next page on the, on the notes packet. Stabilizing selection, disruptive selection, and directional selection. So in stabilizing selection, individuals that have the average forms of a trait have the best fitness. So we're looking at one particular trait here, not just multiple traits, but one particular trait. Um, and we're looking at the majority of the individuals having kind of the middle of the road of that particular trait. So the example is going to be um, this picture here. Sorry, that's in white. Um, but this picture here where we see the size. So we have small lizards, big lizards, and the medium-sized lizard. Most of the organisms are that medium size. The reason is probably these small ones can't find enough food. They can't get around very easily. These large ones are easy to see, so birds eat them more often. And this one seems to be able to have the ideal conditions to be able to get the most food and also camouflage themselves. <coughs> Okay, um, our second type is disruptive selection, and um, you will probably want to go ahead and draw in the graph as well for this one. So disruptive selection is here, and in this one, um, individuals with either extreme of the trait have the best opportunity for survival. So the example, white moths that are on white trees can't be seen, so they don't get picked off as easy. Dark moths on dark trees cannot be seen very well, so they camouflage in well. Medium colored moths will be seen on both trees, and so they're eaten by birds more often. So having that middle of the road trait is not that beneficial. And then our third is directional selection, right here. And with directional selection, more extreme forms of the trait have the greatest fitness. So in this case, we're looking at the extreme here in blue, um, maybe before the extreme here in red was better suited. And in this case, anteaters with the longest tongues get the most food, to show an example. Okay, that's the end of the notes for this section. Um, make sure if you didn't draw in the graphs for this that you do so, just so you have that to compare back to when you do other work.